Time now for The Real Estate Connection with Stephen Fayard, a realtor and certified probate and real estate specialist. Whether you're a first-time home buyer or a seasoned investor looking to downsize, move up, or refinance, this program is for you. Our house in the middle of our street. Tuesday, you go in the middle of From probate sales to landscape design to home repairs and maintenance, this is your weekly look into all things real estate. Now your host for the Real Estate Connection, Stephen Thayard. Hey, 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 hey. Welcome to the show, everybody. Let me have another round of applause. Here. Yeah. It's a good day. It's a good day. Thanks for joining me today on today's episode of the Real Estate Connection brought to you by... Good Patriot Realty, a salute to home ownership. California DRE number 01700019. Hey, if you're in the market for real estate, need any help with your residential purchase, one to four units or any land out there, if you're thinking about building something, hey, give Stephen Thayer a call at 408-472-0817. Again, 408-472-0817. Hey, the title of today's podcast is... The power of home inspections. You know, spring is upon us. Now, in California, we're experiencing somewhat of a delay because um, the weather is still acting like it's winter time. We're still getting deluged with rain. I can't think of the last time we had five days in a row where it was sunny and without rain. And it's kind of slowed down the real estate market. But... There is sunshine on the horizon, which means people are going to be getting out there looking for houses and buying real estate. And information that I am reading is indicating with this slight dip in interest rates that we are seeing people return to the market. There is a pent up demand and supply is still low. So what does that mean for you, Mr. and Mrs. Buyer and Mr. and Mrs. Seller? You are in business. We are going to be engaging in real estate transactions yet again in 2023, and it's only going to get hotter from now, literally, as we talk about the weather. Now, for the real estate market, we'll see what happens. But in any real estate transaction, because you are spending so much money, and if you are a seller, it's one of the biggest assets you own, there is something involved with that transaction that's called information. You know what the saying is, knowledge is power. And so where do you get your knowledge about a house, even the one you've lived in for 20 years or something that you've never lived in before? You get it from something called the home inspection. <laughs> so Kicking the tires is part of the process of buying anything, especially something that's going to be costing upwards near a million dollars. And so why not um, get a home inspection? So if you are a seller, you're going to want it for various reasons. And if you are a buyer, you are going to want it for various reasons. For a seller, I always advise get the home inspection up front. I don't care if it's a hot market or a slow market. Knowledge is power. And when you are a seller, you want to know ahead of time what the issues are. So go and get that home inspection ordered. If you're a buyer, before you spend almost a million bucks, you're going to want to know what's going on with the property and prepare ahead of time before you buy it. So you're going to want a home inspection. So we're going to go through some of the things that are involved with home inspections that you need to be aware of. And point number one, what are the systems that are going to be looked at for a home inspection? So if you have a house or you're living in a property already, there are systems that you're already accustomed to using, whether it's plumbing, heating, cooling. Um, those are basically, oh, and, and, and different uh, things in bathrooms and showers. So the home inspector is going to go in and look at these items. So in plumbing, 
they're going to be looking for the following leaks, evidence of leaks, either in faucets, showers, tubs, or toilets. And then on the electrical system, they're going to be looking at the outlets. So what they'll do is they'll get a meter and they'll plug it into the outlet <clears throat> and it will light up if there's power in that outlet. And they'll test all the outlets in the kitchen, outlets in the hallways, outlets in the bathrooms, out outlets in the bedrooms. And they'll be testing them. They'll also be checking GFI circuit, circuit breakers in your outlets, especially those that are near water supplies in your house. And so you're saying, well, why would there be a water near, uh, why would there be an outlet near water supply? Well, you're going to have an outlet in your bathroom because you're going to plug in either um, some sort of appliance, whether it's a hair dryer, um, an electronic shaver, or um, a hair curler. And those usually are in bathrooms right in and around the sink area where there's water. So if there is, there's something in the GFI that'll trip to stop the short from happening in the system near water. And you're also going to have GFIs in your kitchen where there's water um, because you use water for cooking and cleaning in your kitchen. Um, and so you're going to have outlets there for uh, blenders, um, uh, for toasters, um, and for different appliances, whether it's a countertop, microwave, or a toaster oven. Toaster ovens. This is a free, this is a freebie. They're great. Better than microwave ovens. They heat food really nicely in a relatively short period of time. I know you're used to put it in the, to uh, the microwave for three minutes and it's all done. But when you use a toaster oven and you're reheating a slice of pizza or you're putting in the dinner from the night before, there's nothing like that regular oven heat that heats things nice and evenly without making it rubbery and it comes out and it's just beautiful. And you can cook short, uh, small meals in a toaster oven and you don't have to heat up the entire kitchen in the summertime. So anyway, that's a free bonus tip for you today. Toaster ovens over microwaves any day of the week. All right. So what else are they going to test in a home inspection? Kitchen appliances. They're going to go and turn the oven on. They're going to turn on your gas stove and hear that click, 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 click to make sure that the gas is lighting properly. Um, they're going to check your garbage disposal, turn that thing on, you know, that switch next to the sink that we think is the overhead light sometimes. And all of a sudden you hear the noise um, that they'll test the garbage disposal and run water through it so it doesn't burn itself out. And they'll turn on the dishwasher to see if that's working. So those are some of the systems and appliances. And what else? They're going to test out the heating and ventilation system. So if it's um, the winter time, they're going to run the heater. Uh, they will not run the air conditioning if it's too cold outside because it hurts the system. Um, they're going to check the compressor on the AC, um, check for venting, uh, and see what the remaining life is of the system and give you some feedback into that report. All right. So what else are they going to check inside the house? Doors and windows. All right. So the fire safety door between the garage, if you have an attached garage to your house and the rest of the house, there's going to be a fire safety door. And the reason for that is you have um, usually a furnace maybe in the garage and gas water heaters. And um, sometimes um, you might have combustible materials in your garage, such as, you know, gas cans and things of that nature. So if a fire starts in the garage, that safety door, it prevents the fire from in entering into the main structure, the living structure gives you some extra time. And then there's also a hinge on that door that causes it to automatically shut so that you don't have to worry about shutting it yourself every time. That's part of the safety feature of the safety doors. If you open that garage door and you walk into the house, it has a hinge on it that causes it to automatically shut. So they're going to check for that. They're going to check for broken windows. They're also going to check to see if the seals on double pane windows have been broken. Uh, if there are any leaks, air leaks around the windows. And why would we check for air leaks? Well, because in the wintertime, when you're trying to keep heat in your house, you're trying to co keep cold air from coming in. And in the summertime, when you're cooling your house, you're trying to keep that cool air from going out and keeping the house cool. So it's important. There will also be checking for missing hardware on your doors and any other places in the house. They'll also crawl up in the attic and check for insulation. 
to make sure that the house is properly insulated. All right, so those are a few systems. Another system that they'll check is the foundation and the basement. They'll be checking for cracks along the foundation, whether they're vertical, uh, vertical cracks or horizontal cracks, and whether that's gonna be a problem in the foundation area. They're gonna crawl into the house and look for standing water to see if there's water pooling and not draining properly underneath the house if you have a crawl space. And of course, while they're down there, they're going to check for subterranean termites. Or in some places in the United States, you may have um, uh, uh, ants that eat woods or beetles. They're gonna check for any type of, uh, of critter crawling bug that could uh, damage the wood membranes of the house. Um, and so they're going to look for evidence of that under your house as well. Now for the exterior, they're going to check for cracked paint. Uh, they're going to check for damaged siding and wood destroying pests, termites, whether there be beetles or ants or termites themselves. And they're going to check electrical outlets and whether plants are too close to the home. Now you're going to be asking yourself, Stephen, why are they going to be checking for all of that stuff on the exterior of the house? And why is that important? Okay. One of the two biggest enemies of a house is water. When you have a wood exterior home and it's painted, that paint provides a barrier between water and the wood. When there's cracks in the paint, water gets into the cracks and starts to get into the wood. And as it soaks into the wood, the wood becomes a sponge and then becomes weak and then you can poke holes in it and it's not, it's the barrier starts to deteriorate. So when you have cracks in your paint, you're worried about whether or not your wood siding on the side of your house um, or, or other types of wood or porous type siding that sucks up moisture from the exterior is being damaged. If it's a, if it's a vinyl siding and it's plastic, it's not so much of a big deal. Um, and if it's stucco, which is basically a thin layer of cement <clears throat> excuse me, on the outside of your house, it's not as big of a deal either because stucco um, is not going to break down with water. However, if there are large cracks in your stucco that provide uh, the wood membranes to be exposed to water, then you have issues and you're going to want to definitely um, get those larger cracks in the stucco taken care of. All right. Those are issues. All right. So the grounds, um, a general review of grounds for safety issues, tripping hazards, um, uh, major cracks in the driveway or in the walkways or in the garage uh, where if you're walking, you could trip. Um, those are safe. Those are health and safety issues. And then they're also going to check the roof. All right. So this is the whole entire scope of a, of a home inspection. So you're going to look for damaged and missing shingles, uh, uh, areas of potential leaking and uh uh, remaining uh, life left in the roof. So whether or not, you know, the roof has only five years left, 10 years left, or two or three years left, will make a determination for you either as a buyer or a seller, that information changes maybe your approach to maybe a list price if you're listing the house, or maybe how much you're going to pay for the house if you're buying the house. So information, knowledge is power, and this is very powerful. So after you have all of this data, what do you do with it, right? So let's approach it um, from a couple of different perspectives. One, an inspection report is not a to-do list. There may be normal wear and tear and cosmetic issues outlined in the in inspection report. However, now is a time to make strategic decisions based on the information. Those decisions should be made based on the type of market that you're selling your house in or buying your house in, okay? So if you're in a hot market and houses are flying off the shelf and it literally is like water on a hot pan, it just goes and evaporates, you may not have to do anything because the prize in a hot market is the house and buyers are competing with one another, beating each other up just to get their offer accepted. Now, if you are in a flat or trending down market, that's a whole different story. That means you probably have competition in the market, other houses that may look the same as yours um, and be priced the same as yours. 
and the differentiating factor is going to be the condition of the home. So if you want to get your house sold and attract a buyer, which in a downward market or a flat market is more important um, than multiple offers and bidding because in a flat market, I just said this in a recent social media post, in a flat market where it's taking time to, for houses to get sold and they're not being sold at 100% of fair market value, fair market value is king. It's king. If you can get a full price offer on your house, take it and run. I'm just telling you right now, don't mess around with it. It's not worth it. Take that full price offer and run. And how do you attract a full price offer in this market? You have an inspection report sitting in front of you and you have the opportunity to take care of issues and document them to the public before the house even hits the market. So what's that tell the buyer? That tells the buyer you're serious about getting your house sold. It tells the buyer that you've taken care of these issues so that they don't have to and it makes it easier for them to want to give you a full price offer, okay? That's important. So that's from a seller's perspective. From a buyer's perspective, it's the diff it's the exact opposite. You're gonna be looking at houses and you may have a couple of choices uh, to choose from that look the same, similar neighborhoods and um, similar price. And so you go read the inspection reports for both of those houses and you find that one seller's done the work and the other seller hasn't. Well, you're probably going to gravitate if you're looking for a turnkey property towards the house where the where the seller's already done the work. But remember, even in a down market, there can be competition. And from what I'm hearing, there may we may be seeing two offers, three offers on a house. Not necessarily where we were in 2020 and 2021 when we were seeing five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them, but inventory still remains low uh, for various reasons that I won't get into in this podcast. But um, with inventory remaining low, when you do find a house where the buy, where the seller has taken the time to take care of all the issues and present you a clean bill of health, a clean slate, so to speak, and it's easy for you to rock, walk into the house without making any um, significant repairs and it's turnkey and move-in ready, you may have another person you're competing with. So just keep that in mind. All right. Now, if you decide to not do the repairs and you're in an up market, you may not have to adjust your price, okay, as a seller, all right? If you're in a flat market and maybe you're cash poor, you don't have the money to do all the repairs or some deferred maintenance, you may decide at that point to offer the house for sale at a much lower price. My advice there is be careful not to go too low because in a flat market, you may not um, get the house bid up to where you're thinking it could be. So whatever price that you put it on the market at, you have to be okay in your heart that if you get that price, you're okay with it. Um, what we're seeing is longer days on market. It's taking a lot longer for houses to sell. Um, we're seeing price reductions and we never saw those before. So we always walk into a listing very hopeful. We assume the best. We figure that the house is in great shape and it's going to get an offer right away but sometimes that doesn't happen. And so you need to be ready to pivot quickly um, because you do not want your house sitting on the market for two months. Once it gets past that point, basically the market is screaming at you, it's priced too high. So if you go a full month in today's market and you haven't had a nibble or a bite, then it's time to make an adjustment, make it quick and painless and deep so that you can then get the offer and move forward because you have plans, right? You're not selling your house just for the fun of it. You either need to be somewhere. Um, you might be looking to relocate and you have another house that you're interested in purchasing and you need the money out of 
out of your house in order to get that done. There are real solid reasons why your house is on the market. And it's usually attached to a goal that needs to be accomplished with the money that you're pulling out. If it's not going to be a deal killer for you to move forward with what you're trying to do, then go ahead and make those cuts in order for you to get the house sold. Because in today's market, um, houses will sit. I've seen them sit uh, for upwards of three months and uh, sellers dig their heels in and they don't adjust and uh, buyers just will wait you out and they'll wait. They'll wait for the whole entire selling season and your house will be sitting on the market still next year. That's just how the buying population tends to operate. So if you do not want to uh, make the adjustments and the repairs, then be prepared to adjust the price. There is one more way of getting it done if you are cash poor. <clears throat> there are programs and contractors out there that will perform the work up front and get paid when escrow closes on the sale of your house. Okay. So there, there is another pro there are other programs out there. If you have any questions, give me a call 408-472-0817. Again, 408-472-0817. All right. So this show is getting a little long in the tooth, but we have a couple of more points that we need to go over. All right. What can you do to help yourself before your home inspection? And see, this is really important for you sellers that are getting your houses ready for sale right now. Um, before the home inspection, you're going to want to do as much deferred maintenance as you possibly can on your own. So do your own personal home inspection. Walk around the house. Uh, check the outlets. Check to make sure that all the burners on the stove are working. Check to make sure that your, your oven doesn't have any issues heating. Check to make sure that your dishwasher is working. Walk around the exterior of your home. Look for cracked paint. Look for cracks in your stucco. Um, go to see if there's any issues with flooring throughout your house or chipped paint on the inside. Um, make sure your toilets are flushing properly. Uh, make sure that all your light switches are working in the house. Do your own personal home inspection. And then make a punch list of all the things that you're going to take care of first and then go ahead and do them. What I like to say to sellers is get that home as spanky clean as you possibly can before a home inspector comes out because there is some psychology that a home inspector has. They walk into a house that's beautiful, clean, there's no chip paint. All the all the the house is fresh and clean. The exterior's been trimmed. Um, it looks great. Uh, they are um, more at ease during the home inspection process, um, and so that's a leg up for you. And I will say, trimming back bushes away from the house is an important thing. You do not want a vegetation touching your house if at all possible. You want it trimmed back. It causes issues um, with water dripping on the home um, and, and, and inspectors will call that out. So you want to make sure that your home is well coiffed, as they would say in French. <laughs> coiffed. So anyway, declutter, clean up, do some deferred maintenance, do the painting, clean the floors, um, shampoo the rugs, uh, make sure everything's working change out any light bulbs that aren't properly functioning, do yourself a favor and do your own personal home inspection before the inspector gets out. Look for evidence of leaks underneath the counter. See if there's anything going on. Crawl in your own attic. Crawl, crawl underneath your own house. Look for evidence of other stuff that's going on. It's, it's just will really help you out to take care of those issues because once the home inspector comes out, and writes it in the report, it's in there. You can't undo it, right? It's been memorialized and you have to provide that information to buyers. You cannot hide it from them. So if you can get the house ready before, then that would be really, really good. All right, so you may not be able to address every issue and that's fine, do the best you can. Uh, remember, the inspection is a disclosure, so less less issues on it are better, and that's what you do when you're preparing. But if you can't, 
And then you're because of whether time constraints or it's a last minute thing. I got to get the house on the market. I've been transferred. I got to get out of town, whatever. Then use the information on the home inspection to then create that punch list and go ahead and take care of those repairs and then document them all and provide that as additional information to the home inspection, especially if you hire contractors to do the work, provide the receipts. That way the buyer can see, even though the house had issues, you took care of them and things are settled. Knowledge is power. Home inspections are important. Buyers, it's not a to-do list for you either. Do not use it for um, saying, look at all the stuff that is bad with the house. There are, there is normal wear and tear on property. Um, house, no, there are no perfect houses. If it's cosmetic, meaning chipped paint on the inside, a uh, missing light bulb here or there, maybe it just needs some carpet and paint, but all the systems are working properly. Uh, maybe you need to trim some vegetation away from the house. Um, that's an opportunity and maybe some people aren't going to walk away from it. Maybe you can get in there and uh, make a deal to reduce the price for the repairs that need to be done or the deferred maintenance and get yourself into a nice property and then do the stuff yourself and then turn around and look back and say, wow, this place really looks great. Um, if you have any questions about whether you're getting ready to sell a house on a home inspection or getting ready to buy a house on a home inspection, and you want professional guidance on how to deal with the information or the best approaches to deal with a property, give me a call, 408-472-0817. Again, 408-472-0817. I hope this has been helpful, um, and I hope that we're starting to dry out a little bit in California, and the sun's going to come out, and this spring selling season is really going to hit. But in the meantime, I'm going to leave you with these words. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua 1.9. And don't forget, sign up for the podcast. You can find me here at Apple Podcasts, Podbean, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. <clears throat> if you want a link, give me a call 408-472-0817. I'll be happy to send it to you. And with that, God bless you. God bless the United States of America. Um, and uh, we will see you next week on another episode of The Real Estate Connection, brought to you by Good Patriot Realty, a salute to home ownership. This has been The Real Estate Connection with realtor and certified probate and real estate specialist, Stephen Thayard. Licensed Cal BRE number 0170019. For more information on this program, visit realestateconnectionradio.com. To contact Stephen directly, call 408-472-0817 or email info at realestateconnectionradio.com. And be sure to tune in next week at this time for The Real Estate Connection.